Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my Storm fans out there. This is me, your captain. I'm asking you to keep your arms, legs, and other appendages inside this vehicle as we rocket off into stormy waters. If you give me just a few moments, I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that this stream is starting again. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, you should be able to hear me now. And you see the little bit of the background there. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to a new stream with the Epic Storm. This is the second attempt tonight. I don't know how, but my uh, my microphone um, input for Streamlabs got switched over to um, a browser input, and it wasn't picking up my microphone. But here we are. You should be able to hear me just fine now. Um, you have background music, Nick, absolutely, and we are back, Eric. Uh, Michigan is smoked out. Got to wear an N95 mask outside. Ooh, wow, yeah, Michigan. Okay, so it's already kind of just like migrating. It was in New York, kind of the upper Northwest. Uh, Joseph, that's fantastic to hear. Yeah, I think that it all got sorted out, but it was a little uh, hectic for a second trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. But we got there in the end, and now we can play an awesome storm list that we're bringing back a classic we're modifying it we're modernizing it and we're making it competitive again and that card is infernal tutor as you can tell by the title of the video and the thumbnail we're playing infernal tutor in the epic storm a new deck version version 14.7 super super awesome list and um we're going to talk about it right now so pa is good now uh, just a haze of smog yikes 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 okay um, Infernal Tutor is a classic storm 
tutor, right? It reads, uh, one on a black, sorcery, reveal a card from your hand, search your library for a card with the same name as it, and put it into your hand. Tutor a card that you already have. Okay, sure. But it has this keyword, hellbent. If I have no cards in my hand, then I can tutor up any card. It's straight up demonic tutor. So either I'm already hellbent, or paired up with lion's eye diamond, I can actually get hellbent, by cracking this Lion's Eye Diamond with it on the stack. Very similarly to how we use Lion's Eye Diamond and Burning Wish to cast a card out of our sideboard using the mana that we get from Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, Eric, we are working. It is fantastic. Yes, I had a little bit of a hiccup with uh, my Streamlabs audio output taking from a browser source that wasn't even working um, instead of my microphone. Um, I don't know. Uh, but we're working now. Um, so Infernal Tutor used to be a classic. We actually swapped it a few years ago for Wishclaw Talisman. And at the time, Wishclaw Talisman was a fantastic choice. We were really leaning into the synergies of an artifact that was on the board that played well with Mox Opal. And we had things like Defense Grid to turn on our Mox Opals and... It was just this really nice permanent artifacts that were, worked really well together for the time. And we kind of early on reevaluated Defense Grid um, with the printing of Prismatic Ending. And we have, you know, a bunch of other things like Force of Vigor or, I don't know, uh, just a bunch of main deckable artifact hate now, um, partially thanks to the likes of 8Cast, right? So we really quickly evaluated that Defense Grid wasn't where we wanted to be. And actually, the card that took its spot was Galvanic Relay. It turns out that if we just amass a bunch of card advantage over several turns, then it doesn't matter if one of those things gets countered, um, we have a bunch more to go off of. Um, so Bryant did change his mind with Infernal Tutor. Uh, we actually kind of got to a point where we realized that the same evaluation that we were doing with Defense Grid needed to happen with Wishclaw Talisman. We caught ourselves not necessarily wanting to play out a Wishclaw Talisman out um, because our opponent has white in their deck. Um, maybe it's control, maybe it's something else entirely. And Wishclaw Talisman was really the permanent that we cared the most about, and it was the one that was going to be removed most often because our opponent had a bunch of removal, and it can only be pointed at so many things, one of those things being Wishclaw Talisman. Permanent removal, not, not creature removal. Um, so we are being sensitive to the metagame, and the reason why we kind of reevaluated is Infernal Tutor works really well with Galvanic Relay. Um, and this is kind of something that has been in the works for, I mean, since Galvanic Relay's printing in Modern Horizons 2, um, Galvanic Relay has become the secondary engine of the deck. It used to be Echo of Eons, second to Ad Nauseam, and now it's really Galvanic Relay. And something that works really well with Galvanic Relay, but doesn't work very well with Echo of Eons, is Infernal Tutor because uh, the, the lines where we can Galvanic Relay are one mana less. So we can Infernal Tutor into Galvanic Relay, that's a five mana line. Whereas if it was a Wishclaw Talisman, it was a uh, Wishclaw Talisman plus the mana to activate it, plus the three mana, that's six mana. Uh, so it's a six mana line. And if we're really leaning into this, this Galvanic Relay strength of our deck, that we've kind of seen with the inclusion of Mishra's Bobble and Urza's Bobble eventually, then we've got a lot of zero mana artifacts um, that really work well with Galvanic Relay, and we needed a tutor to also work well with Galvanic Relay. And one that, even though it wasn't that big of a deal, uh, we weren't giving our opponent a tutor that they could then go find their Haymaker in post-board games that we couldn't answer, right? Karn the Great Creator, Collector Oof, uh, Ether Sworn Canonist, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
and Infernal Tutor just works out really nicely. Uh, the thing about Infernal Tutor with Echo of Eons is that it's kind of messy, right? If I were to Infernal Tutor for Echo of Eons, then I would need a Lion's Eye Diamond to get Hellbent, which means I'm sacking the Lion's Eye Diamond before Echo of Eons is in my hand. And then I have Echo of Eons in my hand and I need a second Lion's Eye Diamond to sacrifice and discard the, the Echo of Eons. I needed two LEDs with that line, and it wasn't really a card that worked well with uh, Echo of Eons, which is totally fine. Um, yes, Paul, people were definitely building their sideboards with uh, Wishclaw in mind. We are the Artifact Storm deck um, to some extent, right? Um, where people would bring in Force of Vigors and Collector Oofs against us and maybe not bring those things in against, say, Ad Nauseum Tendrils, right? A card, a deck that really only has uh, two play sets of artifacts, Lotus Petal and Lion's Eye Diamond, where Graveyard Hate is better against them. Well, we're going to be dodging Graveyard Hate anyway. The only thing that we care about is a sideboard Echo of Eons and a Rite of Flames. So, uh... Thank you, Steven. I'm having a really good day. Uh, so that's kind of the the pressure that got us to change over to Infernal Tutor. And this is the... So we're on version 14.7. Um, version 14.4 uh, or 5. I can't remember. I think it's 5. Yeah, version 14.5 was where we started um, switching over to Infernal Tutors. And... It just, it really just took off. It was clean lines. They had, we we didn't have to worry about Mox Opal. As you can see, we have 20 artifacts in, in here anyway. So our Mox Opals were on. Um, our Bobbles worked well with relays because we could play them out as opposed to something like a Ponder where we might have had to Ponder and draw a card which wouldn't have worked with our Infernal Tutors. It just really, really worked out nicely, and we saw a lot of success. And in fact, with this 75, this 14.7, which I realized that I had the deck all laid out really nicely, and then I switched to another list, and that kind of screwed it up. But um, sorry about that. Bryant actually played this list, version 14.7, in an SCG Baltimore event, and top forward with this actually. Had a really good success. You can actually check that video out. Um, it's on our, our YouTube, and he really did a good breakdown of the deck. He had a really long deck tech, and then uh, went over his his matches for the, the day and the event that worked out really well, and then ended up playing a league. So it's a, it's a good time. I'm really liking this list. I think that it's uh, just raw power for the epic storm we have a bunch of ability to overload any kind of single point interaction that our opponents might have we've just got a lot of game with this kind of a list um so version 14.6 was what we were originally hoping for and it was a little spicy we were bringing in xanted swarms and uh, talk about a throwback, right? We were actually playing Xanted Swarm and it felt really good. Um, and we were hedging for like the chalices and things like that of the format with Crash. Uh, we had a three of Abrupt Decay. This was a really good list. And then Orcish Bowmaster got printed. Well, um, this zero one doesn't really work well with Orcish Bowmaster, I gotta tell you. So, we ended up moving to a list that kind of stopped hedging against the prison decks of the format that mm, we didn't feel like we really needed to do with with Crash. That's kind of a niche card we can do with a playset of Thought Seizes. That's a better card um, in a broad sense. And we're not playing the Xanted Swarms anymore. We're playing a couple of Chains. Um, just because, you know, Orcish Bowmasters is going to kill all of our X1s and Xanted Swarm, while lovely and a super powerful card, maybe isn't right in the meta that exists with Orcish Bowmasters. So 
that's the list. Um, so why do we call it version 14.7? Um, so instead of ticking things up like that, we can save out on numbers if we go uh, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Um, and it's just something that is a historical deck naming, right? This was not something that was iterated on other than just increasing the version number by 0.1 every single time. There's no real power to, oh, this is version 14, which has these unique things. Um, it's not really uh, super well thought out, but it's working just fine. We don't really need to keep track of, oh, this is the four Infernal Tutor list. This is the four Wishclaw Talisman list. This is playing Chain of Vapor. This is playing Xantid Swarm. We just assign it an incremental number based on the one that we played the most recently, and that's, uh, that's all we do. Um, hidden mode of getting extra copies. Yeah, Grant, absolutely. So I'm sure that it'll come up in League but Infernal Tutor, getting an extra copy of Burning Wish, getting an extra copy of Veil of Summer, which has been huge. Um, really, really powerful, really underrated ability. Um, a non-Hellbent Infernal Tutor is likely to resolve. Your opponent's like, oh, well, they forgot to crack their Lion's Eye dummy. Their Lion's Eye Diamond dummy. Um, and then you just get another Veil of Summer and you're double protected next turn. Oops. So, really, really good stuff. Uh, Varlis, hey, how's it going? So, let's see, let's see, let's see. 1.0? Oh, Joseph, yeah, that's going to be wild. I don't know if 1.0 is legal in Legacy anymore. Um, some of the early versions had... Uh, well, Git Probe wasn't legal at that point. Some of the, some of the mid-tier versions have, like, Kataxian Probe and stuff like that. I'll have to check out what version 1.0 looks like. Maybe that'll be a fun stream idea. Uh, semantic version number eight. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have something that was that in-depth, but we really don't need it. This is magic. Uh, just a sequential numbering system works perfectly fine for us. Um, we don't really need anything more. As long as we can refer back to a list and be like, yes, version 14.7 was good. Version 14.4, yeah, had a lot of improvement to be made. And that's really just the best way to go about it. So I'm going to get started on a um, uh, league right now. And I've got it queued up right here. Um, playing... 1.0. Yeah, so Grant, actually, some of, I think that Bryant made a kind of a comparison, and there are a lot of similar ideas with earlier versions of the Epic Storm and current versions that are playing like Echo of Eons as opposed to, um, was it Ill Gotten Gains or things like that? So we had a wheel that was a wishable wheel, but it was not as efficient and all of these things. Um, really interested to see how that goes. Well, we've got our first round opponent, Spicy the Squirrel, and we won the die roll, so I think we're going to play. And unfortunately, no way to showcase Infernal Tutor off right off the bat. We're going to take a mulligan. This, I think this is going to be a keep. We have a couple of redraws and some really good mana. Uh, diminishing returns. Yes, that was one of the, uh, yes, that's it. Um, so we're going to keep this and we're going to put back a Taiga and I'm going to just play out the baubles and a land and that's it. We're just going to pass the turn. And we'll draw. You know what? We're actually going to just draw now. We should probably just draw now. This might inform our decision. Bayou and Taiga. Interesting. Okay, so I don't think that they're going to be removing our permanence necessarily. This could be the mirror. Um, 
I kind of want to just play these out. If their our opponent is Jund and they have discard spells, then I feel like having a... Ooh. Well, those are good draws. Those are very good draws. If our opponent does not discard us, which they are going to discard us invariably, of course they are. Oh well. Mm -hmm. So we've got a ton of mana. Oh, huh. thought these bug. How about we just peer into the abyss? Just, just peer into the abyss. Uh, never punished Bryant. Um, it's totally fine. So a lot of the times when I was playing the Epic Storm on stream, I was going to try to um, keep a record of my games to go into the data sheet. I'm not doing that now. Uh, I'm just going to have to do it later. Uh, but this is going to be a fun one to input later on, which is just turn to peer into the abyss. Feels great. We're just going to cast a bunch of spells. Uh, you know, 1.0 might have had Mystical Tutor. That was early enough that it might have just really had some busto cards. Okay, we are still going through all of this stuff. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to bobble our opponent again. Gaia's Cradle. Bobble the top of their deck. Wooded Foothills. Okay, so I'm moderately concerned about Collector Oof. And we can just go get Tendrils of Agony. Nice. Look at that. Turn two win. Uh, through a Thoughtseize. Um, okay, so I'm assuming that this is going to be some kind of Green Sun Zenith deck. Um, I'm going to want the Abrupt Decays and some Thought Seizes in here. The Veil of Summers actually seem pretty good. And... Hmm. Two Galvanic Relay. So the thing is, with this list now, we don't want to cut all of our relays because the uh, the ability to just have one in the deck is actually really powerful even if we face something like a uh, chalice of the void or a sphere um having the ability to just have one in the side or in the in the main um is quite useful we're gonna take out three urza's bobble here and hmm I guess I could worry about Chain of the of Vapor as well. Um, hmm. Let's see. We were just talking about this in Discord. Um, since Discard is not what this game is about, it could be that... Um, the sideboard looks something like this. Uh, Bryant actually was just mentioning it. So Veil of Summer protects against discard. Fantastic. But we actually care most about Collector Oof. And this sideboard plan plays into that best. I don't know. We're going to try it out. I'm going to try out this new idea, see if it works. Obviously, this uh, conversation was in terms of other uh, black-green decks like Elves, but this is pretty close, so we'll we'll test it out. Um, hmm. This has a lot of potential. Obviously, we're relying on this brainstorm quite a bit. We still have this bobble scry action. Um, I'll keep this. Oh yeah, Jason. So I did went. I, I did go live and had some problems with my Streamlabs having an input that was randomly swapped instead of my microphone. It was like a a uh, 
an, a browser source, which was bizarre, and we're really not sure why that happened. But I had to restart um, to try to figure out what was going on. But oh well. Uh, yeah, Joseph, if you scroll up a little bit, um, Bryant posted it. So the new list is, the old list is right there. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if I want to just brainstorm. I don't think so. Because that kind of diminishes this bobble. They don't have discard. Mm -hmm. Do I want to bobble myself right now? And then figure out if I want to get a... Blue source later. Now we're just gonna figure out on the fly. I'm sure that this is a, there's an actual better way to play this out, but I'm not thinking about it right now. That's fine. Yeah, this could just be an oof right away. This could be a thought seize. Okay. You know what? I will brainstorm. They're not going to be able to waste land us. They just played their land. And... Okay. You know what? I think I'm going to put back the Lion's Eye Diamond and the Mishra's Bobble. Those are the cards that I care most about. We are not in want of mana. So this Dark Ritual doesn't really do too much. But I do want to churn through my deck as quickly as possible, so I want this Mishra's Bobble, which is more important to me. So I'll protect that from discard as well. We didn't obviously hit a Veil of Summer or anything like that, which is, you know, fine. Um, against a deck that likely splashes red. Oh, they're going to Surgical Extraction and Force a Shuffle. That's a strategy for sure. Uh, sides into oof and also plays Thoughtseize and plays Bowmasters. There to keep the veil for Brainstorm. You know, Grant, that's an interesting idea. Cutting for Brainstorm against this potential bevy of hate against uh, drawing spells that or drawing cards that are blue spells. Um, interesting. Maybe. Um, it's a spicy take. Could be right. I, I don't know. Brainstorm is just such a very good card. Okay. Bobble. Thoughtseize. Okay. We know that they have an endurance on top of their library. Um... I think I'm going to thought seize them. Pernicious deed. Well, that would deal with two lotus petals. And then Sylvan Library is a nice way for them to get a bunch of redraws. I'm taking the Sylvan Library. They don't actually have three mana at the moment for the pernicious deed. And um, destroying two Lotus Petals isn't really the greatest thing in the world for them. We're going to use this Mishra's Bobble to scry um, Aeolus. Yes, this is version 14.7. This is the one that he really did well with at SCG Baltimore and one that the team has been working really hard on. Um, it's been really, really paying out dividends, honestly. We've, we've been loving Infernal Tutor. And we're really excited that Bryant did so well. So, Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, that obviously is not a card that actively does anything. 
uh, but it's such a good card um, that has the potential later on. Our opponent isn't doing anything right now. Um, I'm going to draw the Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, I think that that's just fine. Uh, yeah, the price tag if you're buying everything is pretty up there. Um, the, ooh, that's good. That's just that's just excellent. Uh, we know the two cards in our hand, our opponent's hand, don't, don't do anything. They can pitch cast endurance if they want to, but we're just gonna put ad nauseum on the stack, floating some mana. Um, luckily, a lot of local places. Um, if you're playing at a local, they can have proxy friendly events, um, which is a great way to go. We're going to hold priority and crack this for black. Okay. Infernal Tutor, Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond, Thoughtseize, Burning Wish, Infernal Tutor, Mox Opal, Urza's Bobble, Infernal Tutor, all four of them. Okay. Uh, Burning Wish. And we can actually go just a little bit further. Urza's Bobble. We can go down to two, actually. Right of Flame. We'll stop there. Um, the nice thing about this Infernal Tutor list is since we don't have Echo of Eons, our Ad Nauseums are shredding through our deck. Um, I have routinely drawn through, or well, put 20, 25, 30 cards in my hand, and oh, it's just felt so very powerful. Um, cannot speak enough good things about the power of ad nauseum in this specific list. So we can, we have six mana and we can just go through everything that we need to do right now without cracking Lion's Eye Diamond or anything like that. Yeah, I had it earlier, but I didn't need to go through those lines where I could just keep flipping. Um, but as Bryant mentioned, uh, these are the revealed zones. So when I had, when I revealed Infernal Tutor, Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond, these three cards, I had three mana floating. And what I could do is I could Infernal Tutor for another Lion's Eye Diamond and use, with this Mox Opal. Um, I would have Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, Mox Opal, and a Black Floating. And that was enough mana to Infernal Tutor sacrifice both Lion's Eye Diamonds, floating six total mana, three black, three red, get a Burning Wish, which was allowing me to then Burning Wish for the sideboard tendrils for exactly the right amount of mana. But I could keep flipping, so why not? We are 1-0 to start it off. I like it. 2-0 to our opponent, the Spicy Squirrel. They were not spicy enough. So uh, we're going to start up another league, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our tokens. If you want to keep track of all of the storm in paper, this is the best way to do it. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as goblins, squirrels, and slime time live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game and we are here we're back and we've got a uh, die roll one against leader hosen fun name um and we've got ah we are so close to a turn one ad nauseum we are just missing black mana i'm going to I'm going to keep this one. Obviously, I'm just going to Volcanic Island pass, but if we get a Lotus Petal, if we get a Fetchland, um, 
anything but a taiga as far as lands go, actually. Is that right? Yeah, anything but a taiga will cast our dark rituals. Um, and if we realize that our opponent is likely playing Force of Will, then instead of Ad Nauseam, we can Galvanic Relay. So I'm going to keep this one. It's a little bit of a risky one. I'm feeling pretty comfy with it. Um, I do need to um, brighten up the background. Ooh, nope, that didn't work out very well at all. Okay. Excuse me. Tried to adjust my lights on the fly, and that just wasn't working. So, Volcanic Island Pass, see what our opponent is doing, and hopefully draw a black source. Braver than any U.S. Marine, Grant. Uh, oh, okay. Death and Taxes, but no um, Companion, so no Yorion. Black Source? Nope. But we are close to turning on Mox Opal now, so we have even more cards that allow us to actually just continue through. Um, if they untap and slam Athalia, I'm going to have some regrets. Wasteland. Okay, I don't care about that. That's fine. No turn two Thalia, Joseph. Uh, luckily, they decided to wasteland me instead, and now we get to do the thing. We drew an Urza's Bobble, and we're going to make a bunch of mana and put Ad Nauseam on the stack, floating three black. Very lucky, I know. I understand that this is not the correct thing to do, but I thought that it was gonna be a lot of fun. So, Ad Nauseam on the stack, and we draw a Rite of Flame, a Dark Ritual, Mishra's Bobble, Bobble, Lotus Petal, Galifanic Relay. So at the very least, we can relay. But there's a Burning Wish. We've got this all rolled up. So can we stop now? We can. We don't have to reveal anything else. Um, so we will play conservatively. Um, okay. Here we go. And this has more than enough storm to also play around a solitude on anything, right? Uh, solitude on their mother of runes or they pitch solitude and then pitch another solitude to solitude the first one and gain three life yeah okay um hmm let's see so we're gonna do something very similar to our first plan which was out the veil of summers and out at least two relays. Um, it's likely the third relay. Um, accidentally 5-0, don't invoke that. Yeah, that's not gonna happen if you say it. Um, but maybe, you never know. I think it's gonna be the last relay. Um, it could be the first bobble if we want, as I was talking about, we could leave a relay in. Um, and it's just, it's just an out that we have. Or with the fact that they're playing 60 cards, they're more likely to see Thalia's and um, Relay gets worse like that. No, I'm gonna leave Relay in and I'm gonna bring out the first bobble and we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, The other option is actually we should leave a sideboard Thoughtseize. We should leave a sideboard Thoughtseize. Uh, I don't know why I um, was bringing all of those in and we're, we're all good to go. Okay, cool. We are on the draw for game two. 
Taxes on low battery. Yeah, really, though. Um, it's interesting how everybody was kind of trying to figure out if companion taxes was the best build, and there was a bunch of debate, and then I think we settled it a long time ago that Yorion taxes is far and away the best thing to be doing. Uh, turns out for Recruiter of the Guard, pretty good, pretty good. Um, Aeolus, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you for chatting a little bit, and hopefully you can catch the rest of the YouTube video later. Um, we are waiting on our opponent to figure out if they're going to play first or not. I hope they're doing all right. I don't think that's a very difficult choice to make, but maybe. We'll see how aggressively they mulligan. They could have a bunch of combo hate in their sideboard, like defense grit or deafening silence, an Aether Sworn Cannonist in addition to their playset of Thalia's, or they could be expecting... Oh, boy. Um... Okay, so they began with seven in hand. This beats a Thalia, because I have the Thoughtseize. This does not beat a Deafening Silence. Um... I have the bobble to draw another card and I'm on the draw like I think that this is going to be a keep just hope that they don't have the deafening silence right uh or, yeah uh, okay yeah I'll keep 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 uh let's do it see what they have if they tap for one thing, it hopefully is a uh, mom. Oh, Vile, that's even better for me. Okay, so we get to thought seize them. Uh, oh, well, I just drew the land anyway. Um, that's even better, because now I can thought seize them first and not deploy all of my artifacts. Extraction specialist. Interesting. That's an interesting way to rebuy whatever I'm going to uh, discard. Like if it was a Thalia. But I'm going to take this recruiter of the card. Uh, oh man, I always forget that I can just bobble the top of their deck. Yeah, yeah, that was silly. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, because I could have just bobbled them and seen eight cards and made the decision of which, uh, or not eight cards, I guess it was going to be um, six cards. Um, but I will bobble now. They, they still can have Spirit of the Labyrinth. Yeah, uh, Fairy Macabre and Recruiter of the Guard are not the reasons to keep a death attack. Oh. That's why they kept it. Um... Okay, well, I'm going to play out these zeros before I can't. And then I have two of the requisite three mana to uh, Abrupt Decay Athalia. Ugh. That's really too bad. Yes, there's a Thalia. No such luck with hitting a land. They do have the Thalia and a Vial that's going to tick up to two. Hmm. So this Abrupt Decay is not going to function like we want it to. Unless at some point they tick up the vial to three for some reason and we can abrupt decay the thalia at their end step uh i don't know why they would do that but oh they're playing flagstones what that seems wrong okay This was an enters the battlefield. This They had another Thalia ro like rolled up as soon as I got rid of the first one. They could just buy it back again. Um, I don't know why they did that. Kind 
because I can just decay the it now. And they have they're holding a Caracas, and they had a rebuy on like a reanimate target Thalia in their hand, and they just decided to get aggressive. Um, I'm really not sure what happened there. And we're gonna roll up with a peer into the abyss if they don't draw anything particularly good. Um, and they're ticking up to three, which I don't know. Maybe they can flash in this fairy macabre. It is good to know that they have fairy macabre instead of surgical extraction here because, oh, that's a little annoying. Um, hmm. Well, that's fine. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so this is not going to cast peer. This is going to be an echo. And we know they have a fairy macabre in their hand. We can wait for plus one mana to cast a peer. I'm not under a lot of stress as far as a clock goes. Um, it's just gonna be what they draw off of the top of the deck. And what I could do is I could Burning Wish for an Echo. I could Burning Wish for Thoughtseize. But then I would need plus two mana. Um, that's less good. Um, hmm. I can just Burning Wish for the Echo right now. Uh, add mana, then look at the top card. And that could make a decision. You know what? That's fine. I'll dig that. That's a neat little line. See what they're drawing, and it's surgical extraction. Hmm. So does that make me want to go now? It actually kind of makes me want to wait even more. Uh, right? I think that makes sense. I can Burning Wish for a an Echo right now. And then next turn, yeah, I'm just gonna use one Wish right now. And hey, Unpundin, how's it going? I'm gonna get the Echo and um, I can get another wish so that it doesn't get surgicaled um, before I echo next turn. And that's a really good draw. Okay. So I'm gonna go to nine, they're gonna go to 26. And we've got a peer that's going to be put onto the stack. Um, is it best to hold the fetch land? I think so. We'll likely draw another land. And we're going to round up for everything. So we're going to lose the same, or we're going to lose one more life, but we're going to draw an extra card this way. And I guess we are going to lose Echo of Eons. Um, but I don't think that that's going to be a problem. That is not a card that we need to win now. Here into the Abyss. Targeting ourselves. One, two, three. We'll float a black mana. We've got a bad lands going on, so it's not really important one way or another. Um, 
And then if we draw cards, we want to make sure that we play, okay, Lion's Eye Diamond first, but instead they surgical before we drew the cards, which uh, is probably correct, but we could have played sur around surgical if we had the cards in hand by playing a Lion's Eye Diamond first. But what they have done, which is really helpful, is uh, lowered our necessary storm count by two because they've cast a spell, storm count one, and lost two life, storm count two. Uh, tendrils of agony, right? So really helpful on their part for us. And we're just going to, we know that they have a fairy macabre in hand. Um, we're just gonna cast a bunch of zeros and end our opponent in quick order. Oh, actually, not very quick order. I don't have, I'm not hellbent, so I actually have to brainstorm into a burning wish. Interesting, which I didn't do, but I have more, so I can put back two lands. Uh, brainstorm again, look an extra card deeper, relay, okay, and then one more brainstorm, looking another card deeper, Adnaz, that's not very good, okay, Oh, I can shuffle with Infernal. Yeah, you know what? That's a reasonable idea. That card that's in our hand that works out really well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, that was that was some sloppy play on my part. I can just shuffle with the card that, and now I'm gonna get punished for it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, what I can do is add Nas to draw. Uh, I don't have anything l greater than a two. Okay, so we're going to try to salvage this. We just need one of the burning wishes. Uh, we do have Echo. They have Fairy Macabre, which they haven't used yet. Infernal Tutor. So we have to stop. Hmm. Which means I've got to... Uh, Echo now before they regain priority and are able to um, fairy macabre me. So I'll put that on the stack. Yeah, so yeah, playing Titer would be a lot better. Our opponent did give us a little bit of a window here because they didn't use their fairy macabre like they should but honestly I should have shuffled the first time we had the brainstorm and uh, because playing the baubles was would have would have given my opponent priority with which to fairy macabre the echo which is not something that I want to happen so I am playing moderately fuck I mean oh boy sorry my apologies, YouTube. Um, hmm. Okay. This is my game to lose and lose it. I have. Rest in peace. That's me. I am resting in pieces. Okay. 
that was unfortunate. That was that was all on me. Um, I could have played a little bit tighter and used Infernal Tutor to draw earlier, um, but that's fine. Uh, we are going to go to game three, where we're actually on the play, which is a good spot, but that was an epic fail, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, it was something else. It was that 3-2 lifelinker, um, whatever it was called. Yeah, Grant, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, that's fine. We're just building up the suspense, right? That's how that goes. Um, this is not a turn one. Um, two, three, four, five. We're one mana away from a large empty the Warrens on turn two. So one, two, three, four, five. We need six. And we can bobble to find something. Um, I'm pretty okay with... You know what? It just now occurred to me. We saw Rest in Peace, Fairy Macabre, and Surgical Extraction. Our opponent is primed and ready for the Graveyard Hate. Um, are they cutting Storm Hate for that? I don't know. I'm going to keep this hand. We're one mana away from an Empty the Warren, so I think that that's going to be just fine. I'll play out the bobble uh, with the Bloodstained Mire, and uh, they've mulliganed to six. Okay. Um, Stoneforge Mishes and Batter Skull with Extraction Specialist and other weird nonsense. Yeah, they might not actually be playing the Lifelinger. They have that three mana uh, extraction specialist uh, lifelink creature, but that's going to be even worse than Batter Skull. So, yeah, they might be just playing a weird, uh, weird Death and Taxes brew instead of something that I would be overtly concerned about. But, I mean, we're about to find out. They mulligan to five. Did they mulligan to. Uh, oh, Graph Digger's Cage. What the heck? They have so much graveyard hate. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I'm fine with this. We've seen four individual unique graveyard hate cards. Okay, I don't want another Burning Wish. So I will fetch away, and I'll get a Volcanic Island, and get a pair Bayou and Volcanic, get all four of our colors. Uh, okay, so this will be a turn three, Empty the Warrens. If they don't have a Thalia, do we think that they just went with a Graph Digger's Cage? So this is uh, gonna be a little bit risky, but we're gonna go for it. We're Schadenport, Thalia, okay. They had the Thalia and the Graph Digger's Cage. I was wondering if they kept one over the other, uh, and that was gonna be really good. But instead, We've got a Mishra's Bobble. I'll draw now. Stoneforge Mystic. Wow, they're really packing a lot in these 60 cards, aren't they? Um, so. Hmm. What I can do is I have Grape Shot. Um which is gonna be our, our sideboard answer to Thalia, which I can get next turn. Yeah, that's what we're, that's what the plan is. And we have a backup burning wish for once the Thalia is gone. We can maybe put a peer into the abyss on the stack. Depends on how the rest of our draws pan out. What are they going to get? Cauldra, okay. The one we care less about, I suppose. Okay, that's enough burning wishes. The 
This is going to get the grape shot. Yeah, well, it's going to be it's going to be a pricey one for sure, but I think it's going to be worth it. Hi, Alex. How's it going? Okay. So they can put the cauldra in. They're not going to put the cauldra in. Uh, they're going to port me instead. That does take me off of the ability to grape shot unless I draw another land. Interesting choice. Drew the land. Okay. Didn't have any. I could have, like, pedal, pedal, grape shot, and kill the Stone Forge Mystic, but um, since the plan is to combo next turn, I think that it's fine. Could have gotten Extraction Specialisted. Couldn't really do anything about that. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is a lot of mana. We are. Yeah, just in case they have the... I was thinking that oh, I don't want to play into um, Lauren of the Third Path, but maybe they just don't have Lauren of the Third Path. Uh, yes, we do. So we have enough mana, so I was going to talk about that. I have enough mana. This is four, five, six, seven, eight... Excuse me. Eight... 9, 10, 11. So this is going to be enough mana to Burning Wish get... It doesn't matter. And then um, maybe a Pulverize. And then um, Burning Wish again to get the Peer into the Abyss so that we aren't opening ourselves up for Burning Wish to get Surgical Extraction. Which is something that we need to be concerned about. Because we saw it before. Yes, just like Brian said. Um, mm, we can get Pulverize. We're not going to be able to cast any of this stuff, so it doesn't matter. We can get the Echo if we really need it. Obviously, the Graph Digger's Cage is in play, but we have like a Chain of Vapor or an Abrupt Decay as potential answers. So, here we go. Unfortunately, this isn't enough to um, kill immediately. And I don't have enough mana to Thoughtseize Mindbreak Trap. This is exactly seven mana to peer. Um, but that's fine. It looks like this is going to be good enough. Uh, okay. No Burning Wish again. But I know what to do this time. So we're going to play with a little bit more uh, zeal, I suppose. Oh, I have LED. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know, I was thinking that we were just going to worry about getting the LED extracted, but that didn't actually happen when it should have, so didn't worry about it. We were talking about playing around surgical extraction, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So instead of my burning... Oh, okay. They have Fairy Macabre. That's fine. Our opponent is F6. So, Infernal Tutor. Sack. Get the last Burning Wish. And get the Tendrils of Agony. Okay. 
uh, yeah, Alex, Macabre is not very good against the Epic Storm for sure. Um, so I think that we really played badly in game two, but we made up for it by a turn six peer into the abyss uh, against an opponent that um, had a little bit of everything. They had a quick clock. They had a couple of pieces of interaction. A couple of them didn't actually matter, but we did beat a fairy macabre in a graph digger's cage. Put it on the board. Um, I might accidentally 5-0, yeah. But if you are liking this content, then feel free to uh, learn about all of the ways that you can support us by becoming a YouTube member um, right now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. And we're still waiting for our opponent, but that's just fine. Uh, Jordan, hold my beer, Kareem, braver than any U.S. Marine. Is that is that what it is now? It rhymes. It can't not be. Um, I like cracking the joke. Uh, my brother is a former Marine. Never. There's no such thing as former Marines, but... Uh, I like to give him a hard time about the fact that I'm braver than him all the time. Uh, it's not true. He's an absolute beast. Um, bars, for sure. Mm -hmm. Put it on the next, um, what is it? Uh, Phil Blackman rap. There we go. Uh, our opponent is taking their time, but that's all right. We're waiting to find them. It happens sometimes. Speaking of... Uh, well, I was thinking about Phil Blackman, but there's actually a really cool podcast that he edits that you can actually listen to. And I'll tell you a little bit about it while we wait for our opponent. Um, they actually just had a really cool anniversary episode, um, number 100, big number for every... Uh, you know what? Never mind. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Cobal and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. And we're back. Okay, here we go. We lost the die roll from Mars to Sirius. Um, I've played against this opponent a handful of times. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, my opponent is chatting with me. Um, they want me to split because they're 4 0, and they want to. Eh, here, you can just read it. They're nice. They're nice people, but uh, we're not going to. Oh, move over. Yeah, there you go. Um, we're not going to. We're not going to let them have that. This hand is a keepable hand, though. We are going to keep this and hopefully crush our opponent. Um, they're going for trophies for showcase points. Uh, that might be where I recognize my opponent's name. Must be nice. 4-0 into an immediately 5-0. Is it not an... Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Yeah, it's not. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out because it would have really would have bothered me. Um, but it's all good now, everything's aligned, and our opponent starts the game out with six cards in hand. Bloodstained Mire. Uh-oh. This Veil of Summer is looking real good. Um, if my opponent doesn't do anything, uh... I think I'm okay. Yeah, I did tell my opponent I was streaming. That's probably not the greatest idea. Um, I'm just going to Bloodstain Meyer Pass. If 
I need to, I can veil. If I need to, I can brainstorm at the end of turn. I'm pretty close to a relay, which is a uh, nice one mana away from that. Ooh, Ancient Tomb. Painter Servant, okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is a this is a neat this is Balin's tomb. This is the Lord of the Rings. Um, I think it's a box topper or a commander card. Uh, Balin's tomb is ancient tomb. No, uh, really, really cool stuff. We're gonna end of turn brainstorm here. Hopefully, draw out a blast from our opponent. Um, and get an underground C. Um, I don't actually have a cover. Um, I didn't think that I was gonna ever need one of those. And honestly, my opponent is stream sniping me. Then, ugh. you know, it is a little punishing, but I thought that it was gonna be best to um, put back Veil, Veil, uh, play into a Galvanic Relay and not play out my zeros, but it is a little punishing. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. This is exactly enough mana to Galvanic Relay. They are still holding up a potential blast, but I'm not going to be able to draw into mana. I know the top card of my library is Veil of Summer. I'm not going to be drawing into a mana to Veil Protect next turn. Um, so I think I'm gonna just, well, I can, actually, I can, I can make a choice now by bobbling my opponent and seeing if there is a Pyroblast in their hand. Goblin Engineer, okay. So it would have to be one of three cards. I don't know, maybe it's a guarantee because they have this mana open and they, hmm. You know what I can do is um, no, we're just gonna go for it. They likely have it, but that's fine because then they'll blast and I can veil. Now I'm gonna draw another veil, right? But um, it's at least going to let this burning wish resolve and I have the option of getting grape shot, seems bad. Pulverize seems bad too. Um, Thoughtseize does not seem that bad. Uh, Tendrils is in the sideboard still, actually. Um, speaking of the sideboard, it's right here. This is an interesting choice. So I could put my opponent to 10 and kill the painter, or no, put my opponent to 11 and kill the painter servant. Um, but we need a payoff, I agree. But like, what's it gonna be, Echo and hope to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond? I guess that's what it has to be. We're not close enough to peer into the abyss. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be Echo. Okay. This is match three. Um, we are currently 2-0, and this is game one. Okay, Dark Ritual. Punished for not grabbing the Peer into the Abyss immediately. Um, okay, they've got a lot of mana, 
and a goblin engineer. <clears throat> Which is going to get a grindstone. We kind of know that already. Uh, I can hard cast the echo, though. So that's something. Um, you know, they did name blue. Vale could have double protected from the, uh, the win. So I'm not going to crack this bobble because it's the thing that's turning on Art of, uh, Metalcraft for my Mox Opal, and this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six for the Hardcast Echo line, which also takes the win out of their graveyard. Um, drew the Lion's Eye Diamond anyway. Okay, uh, we've got a furry little friend here. Say hi to Angus, everybody. Angus is uh, up from a nap and upset about the fact that I'm not paying attention to him. Okay, so let's Dark Ritual. I can probably also Veil of Summer to protect from blue blasts, which I think I'm just going to do. Um, uh, blue blast, pyroblast, red blasts. Wrong color. Um, that's fine. We still have Metalcraft, so we don't have to worry about that. We can float a blue and two black. Five mana available. And it's going to be a win. It's going to be enough to make it all happen. I like that. <clears throat> float a red, play out the other opal, play out the dark ritual. We can brainstorm just for funsies. Put back land and brainstorm. Play out a land. And we can just do all of the things that we ever wanted to. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, one up a game, uh, up one game against Painter. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at the sideboard. I don't play against Painter all that often. Um, so, Abrupt Decay, Chain of Vapor, Thought Seizes, and we don't need, um, Galvanic Relay. Veil of Summers. Mm, yeah, okay. That makes sense to me. Um, this is going to be enough to... We don't need the Veil of Summers necessarily, right? Um, we can discard their, their hand if we are worried about it. Um, we're worried about things like uniquely bad into storm veil turning off their win and their pyros well they don't have to they don't have to name blue right or black or anything like that they can name um white and they still get to combo us but veil just doesn't stop it so i think i'm gonna sideboard like this we're gonna keep a relay in this is a matchup where they don't have the permanent hate that's gonna stop us from casting spells of our relay exile pile um so we're gonna go with that this hand we're not gonna go with though this is garbage it's a bunch of really cool spells but we just don't have the mana to do anything with it our opponent also is following us to six and i will keep this hand um this is interesting um 
This is potentially a turn to Echo of Eons, which is super aggressive, or I can, um, I'm gonna keep this. Um, What am I going to do with this hand if I keep it? Uh, so one, two, three, four mana, which is not a lot. Um, but I can keep it, keep the Burning Wish. Or what I could do is I'm one mana away from an Ad Nauseam. So on turn two, I can Infernal Tutor, potentially, and get Ad Nauseam and then find another mana to do everything that I want. Hmm. That seems like enough of a plan, um, but maybe it's just like, uh, put back the Mox Opal. I don't need to worry about it going super quickly. That might be a good idea. Let's put back Mox Opal and draw more cards before we make any firm decisions. Okay, Let's see what our opponent is doing. Yeah, I, I thought about the wish and then like tutor on turn two potentially for an Adnaz of some flavor. Magus of the Moon. Okay, well now I kind of wish that I had that Mox Opal. So I'm gonna keep the Lotus Petal in my hand. Um, if I really feel the need to get rid of this Magus, I can Burning Wish for, what's their last card? I can Burning Wish for Grape Shot. Oh, they have Mind Break Trap. That's good to know about. Turn one Moon into Mind Break Trap. Um, so I can Burning Wish for Grape Shot and this Lotus Petal is gonna be Storm one and then Grape Shot Storm two to get rid of this Magus. Oh, there's a Mox Opal. So they have one card in hand, and we know it's a Mind Break Trap. I'm actually kind of tempted to lean into this uh, Grape Shot line, because they have nothing going on. They have absolutely nothing going on, and I have Infernal Tutor whenever I actually need to go off. There's the Grape Shot. So I can Lotus Petal and Grape Shot the Magus through or underneath the Mind Break Trap. Totally fine. Easy peasy. Um, it'll work out perfect. Brainstorm's not bad. Underneath the Mind Break Trap, same targets. Get rid of their clock, the only thing that they had going for them. They've got one card. I have three Thought Seizes in the, in the deck, and I have uh, one more in the board that I can go find with another Burning Wish if I need to. All right. They have one unknown card in hand. Another Infernal Tutor. Mm, not necessary. I think I'm just going to go get an Underground Sea and cast this Brainstorm. See where things take us. If I can put an Ad Nauseam on the stack. Oh, Orcish Bowmasters. Hmm. That's fine. I'm gonna take two. Uh, is it two? Uh, no, it's actually more than that. So I should just decay it. Yeah, it's not one thing, a one-time drawing cards thing. It's a 
more aggressive than that. Okay, let's get Taiga and Badlands. Yep, that, ca that casts the Decay. Yeah, I'd be taking four. That's enough of a reason to get rid of this. And they have a 1-1 one, one left over. And uh, I can brainstorm if... Okay. Well, we've got the ability to shuffle. Um, I think I want to shuffle away a Mox Opal, I guess, um, next turn. I can Infernal Tutor for a Rite of Flame. Uh, hmm. Yeah. So I have a Chain of Vapor for anything that ails me or this Orc, which is not ailing me currently. It's a 12 turn clock. I think I can win in 12 turns, but you know, maybe. Um, Infernal Tutor can get a Rite of Flame, which is potentially nice. Get this Mox Opal, which I knew about. We did get punished for the pedal instead. Um, which I think is fine, just unfortunate. Yeah, Rite of Flame plays into Mindbreak Trap, but I don't want that Opal, so I'm gonna just shuffle. I'm going to use it as a shuffle. I'm not necessarily going to go off until I have an answer to my break trap all rolled up. Um, I guess I could have failed to find, but I would have liked to have played that pedal instead, or gotten another pedal, I should say. So, yeah, we'll just pass, see what happens. Our opponent is going to have three unknown cards in hand, and uh, an ancient tomb is among them. Grindstone, okay. So one unknown card in hand. We have Chain of Vapor um, as an answer to a painter, which they could then potentially play and they have enough mana to play painter and activate grindstone all in one go next turn. Urza's Bobble, not bad, not bad. Hmm. I wonder if, yeah, I can I can answer this orc. Um, so I'll play out these zeros, kind of get underneath mind break trap um, if I need that, and then if they don't play a combo, then I can consider a chain of vapor the orc. Obviously, I would have already taken one, but um, we'll see how it goes. Ad nauseum is the best avenue, and that window is closing fast. Um, we don't have Echo of Eons in our deck, so comboing from seven is not the worst thing in the world. I know that my life total reads eight right now, but I do have a Bloodstained Mire. Okay, so they didn't do anything. Um, let me bobble them. Okay, I think that we've seen, I think we've seen the same Mind Break Trap, and then yeah, Answering this orc is not the worst thing in the world. I 
they have the option of bouncing one of our zeros, which they are wisely not taking. That's really good. Um, so that will allow us to mind break trap next turn. So our next draw, or our draw for turn, pardon. a volcanic island okay are they gonna surgical something we're in my draw step flashing in something oh just grindstone okay they mill Thoughtseize dark ritual and then repeat and mill mox opal abrupt decay and they surgical infernal tutor. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, yeah, they're gonna get that. Okay. For what it's worth, we did have grape shot in the main if we needed to echo. We don't have an echo in the main, but. Hmm. Two, two cards in hand, probably one unknown card. I've seen a Mind Break Trap. They might have two Mind Break Traps. I don't know. But um, Volcanic Island is going to be the play as our land, and then Lion's Eye Diamond to follow. We have one more card, uh, one more land in our deck, the Bayou. Uh, which I'm hesitant to fetch out right away because I might want to add Nas and that one life total. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, they just ripped it. They might have had they might have had it already. They used surgical extraction as a peak, but something tells me that's not what happened. Something tells me they drew that for their turn. And if we get to our draw step, but they're not gonna, okay. We're gonna concede this game. That was a little bit of a grind fest. Um, okay, we're gonna go to game three and I like how we sideboarded. Um, I'm not too concerned about the Veil of Summers being out. It is totally fine. Um, mind break traps. We've got the thought seizes. We've got a sideboard thought seize. We've seen Surgical Extraction, but I'm not going to bring in like a Tendrils of Agony or a Grape Shot uh, just for Surgical. We can play around with that a little bit better. Um, yeah, we're just going to resubmit. Resubmit the 60 and see how it goes. And if we can um, pull out a win, turn this 2-0 into a 3-0. I would like to play first. I would like to keep this hand. Yes. So, Mind Break Trap being a very clear card that we need to play around. Um, we might have been able to get that one. If we had um, played the Mox Opal instead of the Lotus Petal for Grape Shot Storm, then we could have Infernal Tutored for a Lotus Petal and been able to play through a bunch of things in, uh, on the board instead of having our hand stuck with two Rite of Flames. Um, and then if we, in our Mulligans, chose instead of the Mox Opal to bottom the Burning Wish, then we might have had an aggressive, um, an aggressive line to Adnaz, but it would have been a little bit of a weird one because we would have not had the burning wish to find the grape shot to get rid of the magus of the moon but we would have had a black source with the mox opal i don't know uh we'll never know but there are certainly other ways that are potentially better to have played that game uh right now though i'm gonna play out uh misty rainforest lion's eye diamond and then the pair of petals and then see what happens. Should 
probably write myself a note. Um, I don't think that I want to play with a hand hider ever, um, but I can at least create one and have it on like a hidden layer and then just push a button and um, pull it up if I, if I really need to. But then I won't be able to interact with chat and talk about lines. Uh, you know, that interaction is kind of the reason for streaming, but you know, maybe maybe it's an important thing. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Our opponent has Mulligan to six and have kept their six. Okay. So we will Misty Rainforest, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, pass the turn. I kind of wish one of these petals was like a Mishra's bobble. We'll get a little scry action, but um, this is this is perfectly fine. Our best draw. So I'll end of turn brainstorm probably. Uh, well, actually, I guess it depends on what our opponent does, but maybe I don't need to do that. Lotus petal. Hers is Saga as their land. They have an accelerated grindstone. Um, I wonder what their decision tree is. It's a goblin engineer. Oh, it's a painter servant. Okay. And we're naming blue. All right. I think that I'm good on tapping. Hers is bobble. Good card. Why in step brainstorm? I didn't. I thought, oh, you know what, maybe I can find an ad nauseum and be good to go, but I don't really need to find an ad nauseum. Um, okay, so I will put back this Lotus Petal and this Rite of Flame. Um, I'm going to fetch for a Volcanic Island, I guess. Uh, actually, probably just Taiga. Um, and then play out the Urza's Bobble. I'm going to Bobble them now. We've seen that they have Orc, so if they want to... Okay, they have a Red Elemental Blast. Mm -hmm. So this Urza's uh, Saga, obviously going to get a Grindstone on their following turn. They currently aren't representing red mana, but it's highly likely that they have a Simeon Spirit Guide for their red elemental blast. Do I want to chain a vapor now? Or do I want to wait to untap and do it on my turn? Yeah, I don't want to lose a lotus petal. I can just delay that decision. Uh, Thoughtseize, that's a good one. Okay. It's a little unfortunate that my blue and black source are one and the same, but I am going to learn from my previous misstep and bobble my opponent first. See that they're drawing a red source, then thought sees them. So they have the requisite three mana, by the way. This this uh, mountain is going to be... Oh, okay. So they have three mana to get a grindstone and then activate it. 
do I just take the mind break trap? So let's think about it this way. If I pass the turn, they play out their mountain and they go get a grindstone. Using the floating mana from the Urza Saga, they can activate it and grindstone me, in which case I can respond by bouncing the painter to their hand. They don't have red, ele red elemental blast available and they would have used their mana for turn. Um, and then the next turn they have uh, potentially a Lion's Eye Diamond to get with the second Saga. I'm going to take the Mind Break Trap. And hopefully I can draw something that will allow me to win before that happens. Another land is not it. Uh, that's not the worst thing ever. Um, let's see. So we've got the ability to chain this painter. Back to hand. Pretty much forced to activate now because they won't have three mana at any other point other than their main one. So this is kind of a forced play, I think. Maybe it's not. They also could be stream sniping and recognize that, oh my gosh, I have a chain of vapor. I'm not going to waste this mana. Uh, I'm going to play out a goblin engineer, in which case I would imagine that they're stream sniping and be better. But um, we'll figure that out together. I like this line, um, especially because their mana is not permanent. Um, if they were able to just activate and then untap on their next turn and activate again, then I'm not super excited about it. But because these Urza Sagas are going to disappear, then this line is not bad. This is also a really nice bottleneck to actually see if our opponent is stream sniping. In which case, hey, it's my first one. I've made it in the big leagues, mom. But until then, uh, we've got to wait to figure out what they're doing. They either are activating Grindstone or passing the turn. I guess they could do a bunch of other things like play a goblin engineer or whatever, but uh, um, we're just, we're just waiting. Uh, no, this is not a known stream sniper. I just told them that I was streaming because they asked to split um, for uh, the QPs that they were going to get. Which, totally fair, valid thing to ask for. I just said, no, I'm streaming, so I'm going to play it out. I might have split otherwise. I don't know. Uh, but this pause kind of makes me think that they were watching and don't want to get called out. I don't know. Maybe that's just untrue. I don't know. Okay, that's a uh, not bad draw. I would like a better draw. So we know all five cards in their hand. They're drawing to an unknown sixth and they get to use this mana from Urza Saga exactly once, which will likely be to play Painter Servant. And if they have a Lion's Eye Diamond, which is less 
popular tech than it used to be. Yeah, they don't have it. They have a Mox Opal, which is still gonna be able to get to a point where I'm in trouble. Um, now the question is whether to blast something or hold up blast or play the, the goblin welder because if they played the goblin welder then um, they aren't holding up blast for a potential combo next turn Surgical Extraction, Brainstorm. Uh, yeah, take those cards away. I wouldn't have minded drawing Brainstorm, but removing three cards that are only okay to draw and leaving me up, leaving me available to uh, draw into something a little bit better uh, is, is good. Um, yeah, if they leave up the Opal, then I need to draw Decay. You're right, Bryant. Um, this surgical extraction is literally just a peak, right? Um, that's that's all they are. That's all they're doing. Okay, goblin welder. It is. Yes, Alex, you are correct. They just wanted to take a look, or at least I, that's what I think. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. So they don't have the requisite mana. <laughs> not, um, not at the moment. They do, um, if they know uh, their Goblin Welder stuff, which it looks like they do, because they're going to tap the Opal, weld it for the mox, uh, for the Lotus Petal. Oh, sorry. Hello to Angus again, once more. Uh, so they can do that, which is just fine because they have used up their welder and they will use it to activate the grindstone and I'm going to decay the painter servant which was a fantastic draw just absolutely incredible uh, and we get to draw And I'm gonna hold that in my hand. I don't have a Lion's Eye Diamond in my graveyard, do I? No, I don't. Okay. So, uh, Welder gave them lethal, but we drew the Abrupt Decay. I guess there's a little bit of a delay. Um, not quite sure why that is, but it seems like some replies are happening a little bit after. I left after they should, but it's okay. I think that we are doing pretty good right now. We have the ability to draw a bunch of stuff. Wish, Infernal Tutor, uh, I mean, those are the, the two obviously one. Uh, the, we have eight of them. Do we have eight of them? Yeah. We have eight live draws. Yes, Trent, we do need a top deck, but we're sitting okay for now. Uh, yeah, okay. They could have waited on that um, and kind of got me with it because um, they have a red elemental blast in their hand. Um, why not play out LED? Because it's an unknown card in, their, uh, in my hand and it might make them think about uh, the, uh, something else.
uh, okay, I don't know if this is a delayed chat or not. So when I say go, um, type out purple people leader um, and I'll figure out what the delay is. Go. Um, all right, they're getting in for one. One a turn, which is just fine. They've got the red blast up, which is unfortunate. Um, I don't have, oh, okay, Chris, not bad. That's like five seconds. Not bad at all. Pithing needle. I am going to uh, grab a bayou. <laughs> what do you bet they name Wishclaw Talisman? It's probably the correct name. It is Wishclaw Talisman. They have named Wishclaw Talisman. Luckily, it's a card that is not in my deck. Ugh, okay. I would like to stop drawing lands. And this is unfortunately a turn that they took off holding up Red Elemental Blast, which kind of stinks. Oh, they do have Petal off of Welder. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, the whole trick that I was just talking about, um, still, still live. Okay. This is just kind of a nail biter, right? Yeah, we are going to time. They're at four minutes. I'm at six minutes. Yeah, they didn't see the list. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I'm going to take a turn off and grab the Badlands, as long as I know that it's not in my deck or in my graveyard somewhere. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to thin a little bit. Okay. Bobbles a redraw. There are so many live draws. Oh, uh You know what? Brian, that's actually a really good point. If I draw an ad nauseum, then I should be playing out this Lion's Eye Diamond as uh, something that I need in my hand. Uh, this is game three, so pretty wild. Oh, that's interesting. They get to draw a card using the Mox Opal uh, that's fun. That's a little cute interaction. Um, nice. Uh, ho, ho, ho. No, we haven't lost. Nick, you uh, have very little faith. Just drawing a back to back abrupt decays exactly when I need to. Uh, wait, no, this is still going to... Yeah, they drew the land. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we are dead to the welder. They drew the land which they needed to... Um, make this work. Otherwise, they would have had to use the welder. Oh, what? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. They can just let that happen. Why did they do that? Wait a second. We were dead. Uh, we should not be alive right now. Oh my god. What's going on? We just... I, I don't know. I... Oh boy. <laughs> I don't deserve this win, guys. But, okay, so I can, um, oh, clicking faster is just fine. 
We're going to get got by Mindbreak Trap regardless of what we do. We can't play around it at all. So Burning Wish gets us... Um, what are we going to do? Put Ad Nauseam on the stack? That's not going to happen. We can't cast anything other than a Dark Ritual if we don't get Hellbent. Yes, I'll click faster. Um, we have drawn the cards. I will click fast. It was pure trend. Um, but we none of this could have been played around Mindbreak Trap, so we had to play out all of the mana because we needed Hellbend. Um, so, here we go. Uh, yeah, opponent is kind of upset in chat right now. Um, that's fine. It is a classic Jordan match of just getting to the point where I... Okay, our opponent has conceded. They are a little upset. That's fine. Uh, we got there in an undeserved win. We did have Lion's Eye Diamond. You are correct, um, Zabeche, but... We had no ability to, no real ability to do anything other than Adnaz if we were going to play around Mindbreak Trap, and we were at 10. Um, I'm not sure how viable that was going to be, because if we had to play around Mindbreak Trap and Adnaz, then we would have had to Thoughtseize in addition to that Adnaz. So we would have had to have a lot of things go correctly, um, even though I forgot that we didn't have... Uh, that we could have just activated Lion's Eye Diamond. But, got there. So, if you are liking this absolute luck sack um, of a league, then you can support us by becoming a, a YouTube member. But if you are enjoying it right now, you can still do a lot of things to support us. Um, let me tell you about it how. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Okay, we are waiting. Um... Okay, so this is not something I normally do, but I will. I'm going to go... Um... Oh, wait. Chat's gone. Okay, that's too bad. Never mind. I was going to grab a screenshot of chat because I needed to kind of log that. Um, we'll do it later. Do it in post. Oh, no. I got rid of the... Oh, that's my bad. Oops. I should have just hit uh, return to queue. I uh, I just closed out of the queue instead. That's too bad. But if you are enjoying this stream, then just like Bryant is doing, showing his pride uh, in the YouTube channel and excitement that we're doing well on stream, then you can spam a bunch of emotes. Um, and, ooh, we're eight members away from our next emote. That's really close. Okay, Bryant, do you know what the next emote is? Can you tell our lovely listeners what we're going to be getting? Uh, we won the die roll, for what it's worth. Um, and I like this hand. I'm going to keep this. Uh, James Casso. Um, Casau? Casso? Uh, I don't know. I recognize this opponent. Um, 
Chris, hey, thank you for becoming a Storm fan. That's fantastic. We are seven people away from becoming, uh, unlocking that next one. So that's really nice. I appreciate that a lot. I know that Bryant does too. Um, Jordan Shock, yeah, that'd be fun. Um, Jordan Luxack, more like it, right? So, uh, yes, uh, our opponent knows that we're streaming. They say hello. Um, I can't remember if this is the YouTube, uh, or YouTube, this is the Moto username of my local friend, James, or if this is someone I've interacted with online. I can't remember whose username this is, but that's all right. So let's bobble, let's see what we need to do. Um, nimble obstructionist. Oh, that's a spicy one. Um, always Grixis control. Okay, that's fun. Oh, Grixis control. Thoughtseize? Probably shouldn't have cracked that second bobble. Hmm. Didn't matter. We weren't going to be drawing anything that could be a good Thoughtseize target anyway. Nimble Obstructious, though. That's a spicy one. Uh, that's a... For those that don't know, it doesn't matter what it says on the front of the creature side. It's a cycling for two and a blue. Whenever you cycle Nimble Obstructionist, counter target activated or triggered ability you don't control. So this is a fantastic way. Yeah, relay would be great. Fantastic way to stifle a storm trigger. Um, okay, that was not a bad draw because it turns on our Mox Opals. We've got an absolute ton of mana. Um, relay would be fantastic. Uh, Brainstorm would also be good. Brainstorm into Relay um, would be nice. Hmm. Veil of Summer is not bad. Oh, yeah, Chris. You uh, ask and you shall receive. It is coming up soon. Okay, what are we doing here? Uh, double fetching in your upkeep. Do you have a lot of lands? Maybe. Narset. Okay, brainstorm. Not a great draw now. Uh play pedal or what uh, mox opal and then move or not and move to discard i don't know opal is expendable i was thinking yeah if i wanted to hold up veil against a uh, thoughtsy's potential um then it was going to be reasonable Not that they were going to get anything with Thoughtseize, but... Okay, Force of Will. This Veil of Summer, not looking bad at all. Um, I wonder if they... Okay, they Brainstorm. I wonder if they're going to hold up Nimble Obstructionist from now on. We'll figure it out. I'm a little fuzzy. I do need to work on the backlighting of uh, of my green screen back here. It's not the greatest. I adjusted it a little bit, and it wasn't a great adjustment. Well, we're playing out of Mox Opal. Um, so next week, we'll hopefully have a little extra uh, improvements to the green screen. I had a giant forehead worth of a uh, flashlight it looked like last week but this week I'm a little pink so it's not at its greatest nimble obstructionist as a 3-1 flash flyer okay 
our opponent is choosing to register X1s in a world where Orcish Bowmasters exists. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's fine. Maybe they have another Nimble Obstructionist. I guess we're going to find out. They've got four mana up. They didn't play Jace the Mind Sculptor. Are they a true Grixis? Okay. Well, let's play... So they have five cards. We know one of them is a Force of Will. Um, <clears throat> let's just Veil of Summer right now. We're not going to be able to draw a card off of it anyway. And um, they can think about... Okay. They have three cards. Let's turn the Mox Opal on and cast a Burning Wish. This looks kind of innocuous, right? And it does look innocuous. Excellent. Four, is this a natural storm? Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it is. Let's get tendrils. Uh, yes, Bryant, it is Tendrils. Tendrils is the choice. Now, we do know that they actively gave up a Stifle ability, so maybe they are holding on to another one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm a little sassy, I suppose. Uh, destroying target artifact. And what? Discards a card. Okay, so I can do that and then discard the other opal, which is fine. It's not going to get turned on anyway. And then dark ritual. Dark ritual. Nice. Our opponent has conceded game one. That was pretty cool. Grixis control a favorite of uh, people that love classic Magic the Gathering and um, just got crushed. Just absolutely got crushed. So, what do I want against Grixis control? We've seen Thoughtseize as a potential option to get rid of the Nimble Obstructionist as their, as their Stifle interaction of choice. Um, maybe... Maybe I don't need to worry about that. Uh, I can always Burning Wish for it. Um, Juan Oppo. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Let's take a look at that link really quick. I'm not going to Google my opponent, but I... Ah. Okay. Opposition Agent. Problematic. Surgical Extraction. There's three of them in there. Wild. Flusterstorm. So maybe I want, uh, yeah, maybe tendrils and, um, yeah, Trent, they, they were like, oh, I'm going to cast a spell and discard a card. And it just kind of replaced the storm that I needed. Um, okay. If I'm going to get a tendrils in here, then maybe, um, it's either Opal or Bobble, and Bryant is suggesting Bobble, which I'm thinking that's pretty okay with. Uh, O'Doyle, Death Shadow better than Grixis. Uh, DRC and Delver, no, this is Grixis Control. So this is, uh, the link was just posted above you. Uh, you can take a look at it, but it's playing a lot larger Gri uh, Grixis build than anything involving efficient creatures. Uh, their efficient creature of choice, oh, this, this is a keep for sure. Um, their efficient creature of choice is Baleful Strix. I'm going to keep this. Um, okay. Ponder, not Thoughtseize. Pretty okay with that. I am liking this Opal right now um, as a potential way to draw into a Veil of Summer and have it protected if 
I get another artifact. It's not looking like it's gonna happen. But we can take this slowly. We're not in too much of a rush. Grixis is gonna have some potential discard, but that's fine. Our opponent shuffled with their ponder, by the way. Um, just so you know. Yeah, you're bad. Uh, top four SCG Baltimore with this exact 75. I don't know about that, Bryant. I think you're pretty all right with this thing. Uh, okay, they chose to not shuffle this ponder. Um, Burning Wish. That's really good. Okay, let's count our mana. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is enough to Burning Wish, eat a counter, and then Adnaz. And if it doesn't eat a counter, then we get to Relay for a bunch. So I'm pretty okay with this. Uh, Shadow is, is favored against Storm, generally. Yes. I'm not gonna show them the zeros immediately. Um, and we're not even concerned about our Burning Wish getting Force of Wild and then Surgical Extracted because we actually are going to win out of the main deck anyway. Now I will play out the Lion's Eye Diamond before um, casting the Ad Nauseum. I'll actually play out both zeros before the Ad Nauseum because they could have Spell Pierce unless they interact here. Blue Elemental Blast. Okay. Still gonna play out our zeros. Um, do they have a Force of Will as well? They do not. Okay. The Blue Elemental Blast was kind of spicy, but unnecessary. So we have a Veil of Summer as well. This is just coming up. Okay, we've got the Infernal Tutor, which is actually what we care about. So we're gonna stop here. Yeah, we have enough initial mana sources. Um, okay, and we've got a lot of mana. We've got protection, we got everything we could ever want and an opponent that is going to be deceased shortly. Now they could surgical the Riot of Flame. And that's really not going to do much here. Uh, they're surgicaling Burning Wish. Well, sorry for that opponent. Uh, we have our main deck tendrils that we planned around this whole thing. So uh, Bryant with the absolute clutch call of bringing in tendrils uh just a plus we'll veil just in case and sacrifice the lion's eye diamond infernal tutor for the main deck tendrils of agony uh alex would be so proud Wow, we are we are four and zero. Oh. We are live for the accidental trophy. Uh, this would be fantastic. Uh, just absolutely blunder my way into a trophy. That's just, that's just how it's going to be, isn't it? That's going to be great. Um, if you like this content, especially about this deck in particular, and you want to read more about it. We actually have a website, theepicstorm.com, that's dedicated literally to the Epic Storm. And I actually have an article that's going live tomorrow uh, that's been uh, covering puzzles with, well, not this list. It's actually version 14.6. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about it and how you can become a Patreon member and support us directly, all of the site writers, including me. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early. On top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm.
Alrighty now. Um, so the Patreon is specifically for the website and the site writers. Um, and honestly, getting articles early is a fantastic way to get a little bit of an edge if you're playing the Epic Storm. Um, you have access to some really cool information that some other people don't, especially our sideboard guide. So it's really, really good stuff. Are we going to, I don't have the ability to do polls. Uh, YouTube's chat integration isn't as good as Twitch's, but their video integration is much better than Twitch's, their searchability and all that good stuff. So it's a little bit of a trade-off, but I can't actually have a poll here for you. So if you think that we're going to 5-0, spam a bunch of chat emotes uh bry shock if you're a youtube member or thumbs up if you're not and if you think that we're going to go for one dream crush uh then give me a sad nas or a thumbs down so harry one two three two and we have a hand that looks pretty good Harry, one, two, three, two. You know what? The 5 is on the line. I recognize this name. I'm going to Google them. They play Maverick. Okay. I'm going to keep this hand against Maverick. Yeah. They play exclusively Mac. Um, okay. So we are on... What do they start off with? Considering sideboard brainstorm out with orcs and narsets being a lot more prominent. Um, every once in a while, yeah. Um, you can take a look at our sideboard guide um, that will probably be updated um, to match the current list and expected meta with orc now in the in the mix. Um, we'll have to see how that all, all actually pans out. Um, Hmm. So, Maverick, Maverick, Maverick. Yeah, I'm so close to a brainstorm. Just natural order. Sure. Um. Okay. Playing Bobble was wrong. Maybe. So let's, uh, oh, Fiend Artisan, okay. Spicy Natural Order, or not Natural Order, uh, Spicy uh, Maverick. Arthur, yeah, 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 sweet. Bunch of thumbs up, we got it going on. Um, brainstorm, Brainstorm are the draws, and then we can just cruise through uh, Wasteland, that's, Wait. Oh dear. Okay. Well, it's actually not turning off that many cards. Just the one. And we drew a land. Okay. So let's brainstorm. Ugh, of course. Of course. Um, so we can put back Petal and the Lion's Eye Diamond. and play out a fetch land. So we're going to be able to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can potentially burning wish into a pier um, or yeah, we can do a large empty. That's pretty decent. This fiend artisan, I'm a little worried about getting like a main deck plague engineer, but they have to play it out. I don't know if that's going to be a priority for them yet. Um, Fiend Artisan is a priority for them. Okay. And I just, I just Googled their list. I wonder if they're playing main deck Plague Engineer. They're not. 
Okay, so Empty the Warrens is a lot more viable than it might otherwise be. So I have a zero on top of my deck. Do I want that zero to guarantee an extra pair of goblins? It's going to be turned off. I get that. One. So the zero would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'd be 16 goblins. Or 14 goblins and a random card off the top. I don't. I can't brainstorm end of turn. All of my blue card or blue producing lands are unfortunate. Uh, the top card is either Lotus Petal or LED. I can't remember which one. Um, I can't remember which way I put it. Uh, I didn't think that it was going to matter, uh, which is unfortunate because I could have Burning Wished for a uh, Grape Shot and then Infernal Tutor for an Ad Nauseum, which is really unfortunate. Um, can't remember if it's LED or not. It is LED. Okay, so... Let's actually, you know, yeah, Brian, I was just talking about that. Um, there's a little bit of a delay. Okay, so let's talk about this really quick. Uh, we might have an ad nos line, just like Brian is talking about. We have two mana available, three mana, four, five, six, seven mana uh, before Collector Oof is gone. So seven mana, and then four of that mana is going to be spent. Um, so that's going to be seven down to three lion's eye diamond is going to give us six available mana that's not enough to actually add nas we would need seven mana so we're going to just make a bunch of goblins we were really close it was worth a shot um i think the goblins is just going to be better than waiting that's why um I, I think that goblins is just going to be better. I, I could be wrong. This could come back to bite me. But um, I don't think so. So, oh, I guess I could have talked about the really cool Infernal Tutor is plus two storm if you have a dark ritual because it if you have like a, you can just find the other dark ritual and um, it makes up for itself in terms of mana and has plus two storm. Uh, really cool line with Infernal Tutor that we have been able to do now. Um, so 16 goblins, just like we were talking about, instead of an Adnaz, which is a little unfortunate, but I think that that's just fine. We still have a brainstorm to come back and find something particularly spicy if we need to. Uh, but I think that we're going to be good here. Do they have something that answers? Oh, dear. No, I'm not going to brainstorm into an orc, but... They just tapped everything out. I'm not sure what's going to happen. This is not a. This is well. Maybe they'll. They're playing Stoneforge. I kind of doubt it. They've stopped playing Stoneforge. They're Knight of the Reliquary deck. Yeah. Okay. No Stoneforge in the list. Um, this might be good enough. Oh no, they lost connection to the game. Oh, they joined the game. Okay, that was a wild ride for all of a second and a half. Um, they were gone and then they're back and... We'll see. Oh, that's really hurtful. Relay, yeah, line didn't care about Goblin or er, Plague Engineer. That's true. It is very true. 
Okay, we're gonna brainstorm now. Um, well, that's not nothing. It's likely not going to get there. Um, yeah, Trent, you're correct. Uh, deck list looking up did not go correctly for this time. Hmm. Are we going to win this game at all? Uh, I think that that's just going to be it, folks. Um, we could... We could try to get a Burning Wish um, and Grape Shot things, but I think that we're just going to move to game two. I think that that's, that's just going to be how it goes. Um, yeah, they are popping bottles. That was a great, it was a great little main deck Plague Engineer. Uh, okay, so we can probably take out Veil of Summers, take out a couple of Galvanic Relays. So we need six cards. And is it going to be two Thought Seizes? Is it going to be three Thought Seizes? And, uh... Hmm. I don't think that we need three Thought Seizes. The Chains and the Decays are good. Um... If we wanted the third Thoughtsies, then we would bring out the first Urza's Bobble. Um, yeah, maybe this is just fine. We need to out the relay. I was thinking that the Bobble was going to be worse than the relay. I think I want to have a relay available. Um, yeah, I think that I want to have the relay available in the main deck as a potential out. Versus the Thalia deck? Are they playing Thalia? I don't know. Maybe. Oh boy. I think... Yeah, but... Uh, their most recent list is not playing Thalia. Uh, okay, their second most recent list is. That's fair. Um... I'm going to mulligan this one. I am going to keep this one. This is very, very good. This is a lot of goblins on turn one. Yeah, I, slime would be nice right now. So we'll put back a lotus petal. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are one mana away from peer. If this was a, if this was a seven, we could peer but I'm gonna keep this, put that back. Yeah, we did lose game one to Plague Engineer. I was not expecting main deck Plague Engineer, but in a world of orc, um, put back the land. Nick, that was such a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that was just a pair of goblins that uh, won't see the light of day because wasn't thinking about it. Uh, that would have been a, a lot better play. Yep, Zabeche, you got it. Uh, should have played the pedal instead. We are we are going to yeah. You gotta make mistakes like this if we're gonna accidental five zero, right? Hold control. And empty the Warrens. Should be 14 and not 12, but uh, 
we're gonna do something oh yeah absolutely just turn one instant concession never misplayed a single thing okay now I've got to keep some interaction uh, uh, well I, the deck gave me interaction but not enough mana to do anything with it uh, should be more specific oh Yeah, okay. Pressure got to me, and... Well, you know what? I have an answer to Deafening Silence, so that's good. I have an answer to Deafening Silence, so that's good. Hmm. Yeah, played around Wasteland. That's exactly what we were doing there. Definitely uh, bungled this one up. Yep. Oh well. That's too bad. What are they gonna do? Grist, Knight of the Reliquary? Okay. Yeah, they got a fast clock too now. There's a land. It's uh, gonna eat a wasteland. I think I'm just gonna actually keep it. Um, yeah, they really do. It's like, you kept a no lander. Are you sure you want this? Um, yeah, no more, no five oh. That one's my own fault. Uh, so what we really need to top deck is a, like a lotus petal, and then yeah, I don't even know if we can do anything here actually. Ooh, okay. I don't know if we could have beaten this draw with anything other than the nuttiest 
a six card hand anyway, but uh, I didn't give myself the opportunity to do that. So yep, our opponent played perfectly. All right, that is unfortunate. We are four and one on the night, which is a really good finish. We bungled our way up to the 5-0 attempt and just bungled our way out of the 5-0. So it's only fitting, right? Um, we're gonna open up these chests and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a wrap up for, um, for the deck. So we're gonna open all these and see what happens. We opened up uh, nothing particularly good. Thassa, God of the Sea, Copperline Gorge. I don't think that that's very much money. Ramanop Excavator. Okay. Uh, and then 60 play points. Okay, not bad. Let's talk about this deck. Uh, this is the Epic Storm version 14.7. This is our latest and greatest lineup for... Uh, playing Storm. This is probably the best Storm deck there is right now. Um, a lot of people are thinking that Black Saga Storm has got some legs. It's a good deck. There's not anything wrong with that, but playing one color severely limits your ability to answer um, everyday regular cards. Um, whereas the Epic Storm is specifically focused to be the best storm deck um, there is. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are playing Infernal Tutor now, which has made a lot of things really, really nice. We actually saw that we were able to increase our storm count by two because we had a dark ritual in our hand and enough mana to Infernal Tutor, reveal the dark ritual, and then cast the dark ritual, which, which ends up paying for itself and adding two storm really really a good line um we could technically do that with wishclaw talisman but we needed a lion's eye diamond whereas now we can do it with dark ritual and rite of flame so um that's a really nice clean line uh what gets us back into the game not a lot um yeah opponent disconnecting you're conceding that's for sure so this nice uh this nice list really performed well despite my misplays so I think that that uh, speaks to a lot of the skill of deck building that went into this. Um, Bryant has been really working his tail off for this 75. Um, we had a, six, a 75 that included Xantid Swarm and then Orc, uh, the Orc got printed, Orcish Bowmasters. Um, so Xantid Swarm got a little bit less good right now, but love this list this 75 i wouldn't change anything right now um so a nice four one pretty excited about that if you like this comment or content make sure to like uh like the video comment below i'll respond to you and we can have a chat about what you like and what you dislike about this deck thank you for hanging out and i will see you next week for some more combo content have a good night